the psalmist said in Psalm 104 verse 24, O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. A Dovishian period came the Silurian period, which is named after an ancient Celtic tribe called the Cilias or the Silurians, who once lived in Wales. This period began about 430 million years ago and lasted for over 30 million years. The Silurian climate was mild and pleasant for the most part, although in some places there were deserts and landlocked seas in which salt deposits accumulated. In the shallow seas, the presence of large quantities of algae and coral produced widespread ridges and rifts. Volcanic movements and gigantic eruptions caused many physical changes in the environment. The interplay of land and water contributed further to making this period one of the most restless in the history of our planet. The adaptation of marine plants to land may very well owe its success to these changes in landforms. When the seas retreated, for example, vast areas of muddy ocean floor remained repeatedly exposed to sun and air. Some of the vegetation that at one time thrived in the sea adapted and survived out of water in this wet, wet and muddy soil. Meanwhile, in the oceans, a new kind of animal was rapidly developing from primitive ancestors, the first vertebrate. A new era, the age of vertebrates, was thus introduced by the emergence of fishes. At first, the fishes developed modestly in size and efficiency, but later they prevailed and dominated all other marine fauna. When an ice age arrived at the closing of this period, many kinds of jawless fishes had already developed and were soon followed by even more advanced fishes with biting jaws. During the Silurian period, plant life moved to land for the first time. These first land plants were still very dependent on water. They had a vascular system for circulating water in their stems and leafless branches. There are many fossils of these first prickly leafless named plants named Silophyton or naked plants. So these are the very first fossils which were prickly. They had prickly things all over. And they were leafless plants called the Silophytins or naked plants. Now the Goniophora over here was a pelicipod or bivalved mollusk. It's two shells were equal in size and hinged. Together, they made a well-protected home for the animal side. Goniophoria found its food on, at the sand at the bottom of the sea. An ancient cousin of the modern clam, it met its extinction during the Devonian period, so it didn't last to the other periods. Also in the phylum mollusca, dentalium was a snail related to gastropods. This was actually a snail related to gastropods that appeared during the Silurian times. Its shell was shaped like an elephant's tusk and it's, you see, just like an elephant's tusk and it's measured about three inches in length. Now the Platyceras was a small snail that lived in close relationship to the crinoids. It clung to the side of the sea lilies and found its food in their branches. Other gastropods prevalent in this period include the Merchersonia here and Plachiostoma just right beside it. The Merchersonia had a spiral shaped shell only about two inches long. Plachiostoma on the other hand had a very long shell that was tightly coiled. The Plachiostoma is another animal that became extinct during the next period which was the Devonian period. Fossilized impressions of the earliest known myriapods were found in Silurian deposits. Myriapods are classified as arthropods. Like today's common millipedes, these arthropods and exoskeletons, one pair of antenna and pairs of legs on their many body segments. 
other arthropods such as the trilobites left many fossils in this period despite the fact that they were declining. The Dalmanites was a common trilobite in the Silurian seas. The disappearance and ultimate extinction of the trilobite may have been the result of continuous and relentless hunting of the part of primitive fish and gigantic arthropods. The largest arthropod of the entire Paleozoic era lived in the Silurian period and this was the Pterygotus. You can see so this was the the biggest arthropod in the whole of the Paleozoic era Pterygotus was a giant sea scorpion which measured up to 10 feet in length its diet included about just about any other contemporary living organism so it used to feed on any of all of these things all of these other organisms now trilobites were always on the menu so the Pterygotus was always looking for trilobites to feed upon. Even the heaviest bony armor of the jawless fishes was vulnerable to the fearsome attacks of the Pterygotus, which was a sea scorpion. The jaws were equipped to saw and tear open the toughest armor. Sea scorpions, also called the Eurypterids, are thought to be the ancestors of modern land scorpions. So scorpions actually started in the sea and the Pterygotus was the biggest in the whole of the Paleozoic era. The earliest forms of the vertebrates were fishes called ostracodens, which increased greatly in number during the Silurian period. Lakes and rivers teemed with these small jawless armored fish. Ostracodem sucked up tiny soft-bodied animals which dwelled in muddy river beds and on the bottom of lakes. Over millions of years, the skin of the ostracoderms gradually hardened, forming a protective shield of bony armor. This form of protection was a very real necessity since hungry predators such as the Eurypterids were growing in number while comparatively harmless trilobites and nautiloids were declining. Now the cephalospis over here, the cephalospis and treponospis are examples of primitive jawless fish of this time. You can see they're shaped like fish but have no jaws. These creatures had their heads well encased in heavy armor. The cephalospis had a flat head shield that was round in the front and horn like projections that were pointed to the back, making it look somewhat like a trilobite. It had two eyes close together on top of its head. Can't quite see it here, but it had two eyes and close together at the top of its head, a single nostril, and a pineal opening that may have the, at one time have become a second set of eyes. Its narrow plates allow the animal to move freely and its dorsal fin helped to keep its balance. This creature most likely lived on the bottom of lakes and rivers. It's fed by sucking in mud and then straining out bits of through food through its gills. Now the Burkinia was a small tepodal shaped armored fish whose body was completely covered with narrow scales, completely covered with narrow scales and they overlapped each other. Its eyes were on the side of its head, so we can see one of the eyes here, but we can't see the other eye because they were at the side of its head. Bechinemia was different from other ostracoderms because it had ventral fins and spines both on its back and belly. Now, ventral fins means that the fins were on the belly of the animal. So we can't see the fins because they were on the belly of the animal. Now, placoderms meaning plate-skinned fishes first made their appearance at the end of the Silurian period. A red line on our timeline, so this is the placodem, this is the red line showing the development of placodem, shows the rise of these animals over to the Devonian period, to the Carboniferous period, and finally to the Permian period where they became extinct. Although similar in appearance to ostracoderms, the placoderms are classified as true fish. They were the first vertebrates to possess unmistakable characteristics 
of the modern fishes jaws and several pairs of fins so this is the silurian period where we first had the appearance of fish next we'll be moving to the devonian period to see which animals were alive during that period